Okay, so one of the challenges that we often face as electronic musicians is adding life and expression to our tracks. It is super easy for everything to sound robotic and monotonous, particularly if we are programming sounds directly into our MIDI editor. Now, of course, it's super cool if you're able to play your sounds in live, but if you're anything like me and often make a mess of it, it's really handy to have a few tricks up your sleeve. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is give you three tips and techniques for adding that kind of human feel and spicing up your hat patterns. So here's the hat pattern in question. I'm just going to give you a quick blast of it on its own. Straight up 16th note pattern. There we go. Now let's hear how that sounds when it's sitting on top of the track itself. It's got no movement at all, very flat and boring. So even though there's some great movement in other elements of the track, this is really dragging things down and just sounding so static and uninspiring. So let's go ahead and add some interesting movement to this. I've got a duplicate so we can compare and contrast. And the first thing that I'm going to do is add a groove file to this. Now, if you right click and go into the groove library, you've got a whole host of options here. And the most popular tends to be the Logic Swing 16. But I find a lot of joy using patterns from the Latin percussion folder. And you can just click on these to preview them. And in this instance, what I've done is pick the Afro Jazz Bongo pattern. Now, straight as it is, I can just drag it across onto the MIDI clip in question. And then we can have a listen to a before and after. So straight away, we've got some really interesting movement. And if you're interested to see exactly what the groove file is doing to your MIDI, you can just click the commit button. Now take a look because you're going to see both the velocity and the position of the notes change. And this is exactly what's going on in the background. Now I'm going to undo that because as soon as you commit, you lose the option to mess around with things like your timing, your velocity and your random. And here's the deal. Even though we've got this applied and it's adding that cool kind of pulse, it's still got a robotic feel because nothing is being randomized like it would happen if you were playing this in live. So there's a couple of things that we can do to that. First of all, inside of the groove file itself, you can add a few percent on the random. You don't want to go too far or it starts sounding like this. No good to no one, but a few percent in here. And it's barely noticeable but the human ear will pick up on things like that. Now that is dealing with the timing. When it comes to the velocity, we can go ahead and use a MIDI effect for that. So let's dive in and we'll grab velocity. This is already wired to volume. So if I pick the first one, add some random, this is immediately gonna start jumping up the volume of each of these hits. But that obviously sounds all over the place. It's a bit too much. That's probably like I would play it in if I was doing it myself. I want to get some control of that. So I can interfere here with the range. This is the range of velocities that this plugin can output to our hat. I'm going to dial this up so we don't get the super quiet ones. We'll leave the loud ones there. No problem with that. And then let's bring the random down to something a bit more manageable, just like we did with the timing of the notes in the groove file. Still feels a touch jerky to me, so I'm going to take a few off of that. And now what we've got is as well as the natural kind of swing and feel, there's also the tiny bits of human error in there that are much more interesting to the human ear. Last tip is we're going to use the vocoder. So this is really common in house, tech house, 
In fact, you can use it in pretty much any electronic genre. And what this is doing is every time the hat comes in, I select noise in the carrier and it starts blending in some white noise to it. So have a listen to how this sounds. And something that's quite uh, a common trick that you hear is coming up to transition points or when you're bringing a new sound in, often the release is ramped up. So it sounds like this. So that's a nice little extra tip for you that uh, you can use for automation purposes. But what we're going to do is just play a little bit with this dry wet because it's kind of like altering the timbre of the sound. Now I've got the Max for Live LFO device, very, very simple plugin. And if I click on map, link that to the dry wet. As I play this back, you're going to hear and see that the white noise is being blended in on a random basis. I've picked out of all the different LFO types, random. And again, you can tweak things like the depth if you want this to jump up much higher. But I want something again that's reasonably subtle in here. It's not too overbearing. I don't want to interfere too much with the sound from the swing file because that's matching the track really well. So now here are our differences. Big difference, right? One is super robotic and the other one's really spiced up and got some vibe to it and is adding a nice feel to the track. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. We got a bunch of these fast and easy to implement techniques for you in our free 101 Ableton Tips for House and Techno Producers ebook. As I said, totally free. So grab yourself a copy. The link is in the description. Until next time, take care and happy music making.